Professor Gloop. Welcome to the world of science. Today we look at cells. used as the basic unit of this little toy house. Wow! Hmm, aha! Uh -huh. Aluminum cans are used to build the basic unit of this model. Bricks are used as the basic unit of a building. Mm -hmm. What about our body and other organisms? are built from millions of basic units called cells. A cell is very small. It can only be seen under a microscope. If you want to see what a cell looks like, you will first have to know how to use a microscope. Do you know what a microscope is? Have you seen one in your science lab? A microscope is used to see tiny things that cannot be seen with our naked eyes. Not here, over there. But if you want to use a microscope properly, you should know all its different parts. A microscope has two lenses. This is called the eyepiece. This is where we place our eyes when we want to look at a specimen. The lower lens is called the objective lens. There are three different types of objective lens that we can choose from to magnify specimens. To see the specimen clearly, we have two different control points. They are the fine control adjustment knob and the coarse control adjustment knob. There is a mirror at the bottom of the microscope which reflects light into the microscope. To control the amount of light that enters the microscope, we use the diaphragm. Hmm. Hmm? Okay, first place this microscope on a flat surface like this table. Place the slide on the platform with low magnification. Use the specimen clip to hold the slide. Okay, now let's see if we can see the specimen clearly. Blur? Don't worry. All you have to do is to adjust the cost control until you can get a clearer view of the specimen. Then adjust the fine control to get the clearest view. Clear? Good, very good. Would you 
like to see what a cell from your body looks like? Let's get a cell from our cheek and look at it under a microscope. To prepare the human cheek cell slide, we use these. A toothpick, a slide and a slide cover. Blue methylene reagent, filter paper, and a microscope. Use the blunt part of the toothpick to scrape the inner part of your cheek. Use a clean toothpick to avoid infection. But remember, don't scrape too hard or you will hurt your inner cheek. This is how it's done. First, put a drop of water onto the slide. Put the scraped cheek cells into the drop of water and give it a stir. Next, put a drop of methylene blue into the mixture. Before putting the specimen under the microscope, Cover it with the slide cover. Absorb excess liquid with the filter paper. Look at the specimen under a light microscope using low magnification. Now let's look at our specimen. This is what a human cell looks like. The cell membrane is the outer layer of an animal cell. It allows elements such as oxygen, gas, water and sugar to pass through. Protoplasm is found inside the cell membrane. It is made up of a nucleus and cytoplasm. The nucleus directs all the activities of a cell. Cytoplasm is the semi-fluid matrix inside the cell. It contains water and chemicals as well as other cell parts that carry out special functions. differences between a human cell and a plant cell. Animal cell? Plant cell? think a plant cell looks like an animal cell? This is an onion. We are going to get its inner epidermal cell. We use these materials. Slide and slide cover. Razor blade. Forceps. Filter paper, iodine reagent, and 
a light microscope. Procedure. Use a forcep and a razor blade to peel off the onion's inner epidermal cell. Put a drop of water onto a slide. Next, put the epidermal cells into the drop of water. Then, put a drop of iodine into the mixture. Before putting the specimen under a microscope, cover it with the slide cover. Absorb the excess liquid with the filter paper. Look at the specimen under a light microscope with low magnification. This is what a plant cell looks like. The outer layer of all plant cells is the cell wall. It provides structural strength and support and protects all other structures inside the plant cell. Animal cells do not have cell walls. The cell membrane is the thickest layer of the cell. It allows elements such as oxygen, gas, water and sugar to pass through. Protoplasm is made up of a nucleus and cytoplasm. The nucleus contains chromosomes that control all the activities of the cell. Cytoplasm is the semi-fluid matrix inside the cell. It contains water and chemicals as well as other cell parts that carry out special functions. Chloroplast contains chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is the green colored substance in plants that helps in the process of photosynthesis. Animal cells do not have chloroplasts. A vacuole exists only in plant cells. It contains water and gases called sap cells. Hmm, so what are the differences between a human cell and a plant cell? Human cell doesn't have a cell wall, vacuum, and chloroplast. Are you sure? What are the similarities between a human cell and a plant cell? Both have a cell membrane and protoplasm. Hmm. Are you sure? Positive? Positive. Hmm. Congratulations! You got the correct answer. You get two yes. points. Yes, yes, yes.
An animal cell such as a human cell has this basic structure. Cell membrane, nucleus and cytoplasm. However, a plant cell is slightly different. Like the animal cell, it also has a cell membrane, a nucleus and cytoplasm. In addition to that, plant cells have a cell wall, a vacuole and chloroplast. A plant cell has a cell wall, but animal cells do not. A plant cell has a vacuole, but animal cells do not. A plant cell has chloroplast, but animal cells do not have chloroplast. between the shape of a plant cell and an animal cell. What is the function of the nucleus? What is a unicellular organism? What is a multicellular organism? Why can't we use the course control when we look at something under high magnification? And coming up in the next program, we have multicellular organisms <laughs> so don't forget to tune in bye <laughs>